And now we're ready to put the nine row center bar in that holds the D-rings in place. One thing I find helpful, um, you see I've marked the center here with a piece of detail yarn. I like to get some paint sticks from a hardware store uh, to use as a guide to get that first row in kind of straight. So I put a rubber band around that, slip one on each side of the cinch cord, put a rubber band around that side, and now I've got a nice line to work with to get my get the cord in there nice and even and straight. Now I can take and untie this. Get that out of the way. When you put these paint sticks on, you want to make sure there's no twist in the cord that's here above or below. Now, it's nine rows total. We're going to start on the inside and work up five rows. Then we're going to flip it around on the loom and do the other side with four rows. I've got about eight and a half feet of detail yarn here. Um, it's complementary to the, the diamond here I put in as a sorrel and this is a dark brown. So we're going to start similarly, just get the ends of this together, put one on each side of that first strand of cinch cord, and we don't need to do an extra wrap for this. We just start right in with a leapfrog, go over one and under one. Over one and under one. Now, here we are on the third strand, and this is where we want to add the D ring in. So, this has got to go through the D ring and then under the next strand of cord. And then we continue our leapfrog going across. Remember not to twist these, make sure they're parallel in between each leapfrog. Yeah, nice straight, nice and straight that line is. That's that's hard to do without these paint paddles. Now we get to the third strand, and here is where we want to add the other D ring. So it goes through the D behind the second strand. Now we're ready for our turn, so indicate, wrap, go up on the outside and down on the inside and we start back. Now as we come back, we've got to pay attention every time we cross that third strand. We're going behind it, everything's fine. But if we're going over it, we also go through the D-ring. Through the D-ring, over and behind the next strand of cord.
Here we go, going behind the third strand. Now it's time to go over it and through the D ring and behind the second strand. Now at this point we can remove the paint paddles because we got our line established. Now it's time to turn. Start back. Now we're going behind the third strand. Now we're going over and through the D ring and behind the fourth strand. Always making sure that they're not crossed. See, that's crossed, and that would be, we wouldn't, we'd be in trouble if we did our leapfrog that way, but I'm parallel, and then it's okay to do the leapfrog. This one's going behind the third strand. This one goes through the D-ring, over the third, and under the second. Now turn. Again, we're going behind the third strand. Over the third, through the D, under the fourth. Here is going behind the third strand. And we go through the D over the third strand and behind the second strand. That's four rows, so we need to do one more row across. get this row finished we're going to put a little we're going to park it in place with a little shoelace knot so we don't lose our tension then we'll pull the cinch off the loom flip it around and we're ready to start four rows going this way and we want the ends to end up opposite this. So we're going to start over here rather than starting on the left. Because if we, if we did one row, two row, three row, four row, all the ends would end up at the same side. And that makes it hard to tuck the ends. So we'll start 
the second half of this on the right side of this edge. Even up the ends, like that. And start right in with the leapfrog. Again, every time we cross the third strand, we have to go through the D-ring behind the next. And we continue that till we have a total of nine rows. 